G'day everyone, welcome to Life on the Hulls. I'm Ross, I'm building a 40 foot catamaran and today I've just finished the fabrication of this deck. 92 square meters of uh, hand laminated foam core. It's been a brutal effort. Uh, around about nine weeks, I think. I'm gonna actually try to collate the exact hours it's taken me to do this. But for now, we're gonna get back into getting the foam done around the window sides and around the side companion ways in this video. Now, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'm almost at 20,000, so go and subscribe right now and don't forget to like it and make a comment. Any questions you got about the build, feel free to ask me at any time and, uh, and I'll attempt to answer them either in the following video or in the comments itself. But this is all about the build for me and I hope you're enjoying the channel. Don't forget, uh, lots going on over on the Composite Shop channel as well. If you haven't already watched that channel, that channel basically focuses on the, the build of a carbon reinforced surf kayak. So lots of composite laminating information there and plenty more videos in the pipeline coming up on the Composite Shop channel. Thank you guys and let's get into it. So I'm going to kick off this week's episode by continuing on with the foam around the side lower windows on the uh, on the deck. Now this foam that I'm working on right here with the sea light is actually 25 mil cross cut foam. And to understand the complexity of the area I'm working here, I have uh, the top companion way which has a 10 millimeter foam. Then I have 25 mil of foam, and then I have the window insert to consider, which is also 12 millimeters of MDF with gel coat and layers of glass on it, and then back down to that area that I strip planked last week with the foam core. So there's quite a lot to do around this area and in fact I couldn't work out how to tie it in and, uh, and I got a little bit frustrated with my thought process but I eventually worked it out and over the next couple of weeks you're going to actually see how I finish this off but for now I'm going to get back onto doing some more foam up on the companion way. Okay, the side companion way uh, step. The big long runway along the side there is a 10 mil foam, which is this H80, um, this wide. Now I need to cut around about 15 meters, or actually more than that, 20, 21 meters I need. And the width needs to be the width of this here. I'll take it a rough measurement. And uh, I need to cut long strips of this wide, glue them down, shave them off, and that'll be done. Hello darling. Did you get my news? No. Border shut until 12 o'clock Monday night. So Janet and I are going to New Zealand on Tuesday for Janet's birthday and they've shut the border! <laughs> Are we on flight until Tuesday? Midnight Monday night, we're flying out 9.30 Tuesday morning. So we're going to have to pack to go to Sydney to stay the night and then hope the borders open on, on Tuesday morning to fly to New Zealand. So, thank you, COVID. Mm. <laughs> so over it. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Well, Monday night. So, as long as everything goes well this weekend, we may still be going, or we might be working on the boat. I think I'd rather work on the boat right now, because it's a little bit stressful. <laughs> Oh, the weather this week's just been absolutely disgusting. I really haven't been able to laminate because it's just been too wet. So good time to cut foam, get it all ready. And, uh, and then when it, uh, the humidity improves a bit, I can get it glassed down. But for now, I'm just basically getting it all prepped, uh, get all the templating done and then glue it down uh, because that's sort of oxygen inhibited anyway and humidity is not going to affect it. As long as I clean it and immediately put it in place but yeah so um, these side panels got one right up in there and then these ones are going to fit on the side here like this all the way along the side so that'll go there and then another one here and essentially that's um 
going to be the order of the day all the way along. It's a 10 mil foam along there. Now, why it's 10 in the narrower sections is because there's quite a lot of support in all these curves and sort of, con I guess you'd call them contours or complex curves that we have here. So we can go down to a 10 mil, but what I'm also going to do, I'm also going to add extra strip reinforcement around where the, the joint of the foam is and certainly over the edge. I don't intend to just do the straight laminate of one layer of 600, a layer of 300, or other way around 300, then 600. I intend to then do another layer of 600 over the complex curves around the top here and particularly around these window mullions, they have to be reinforced and beefed up. So I'm thinking about strength and reinforcement, but only in small areas where I can certainly cut down weight. You wouldn't want to put a whole another layer on the whole boat. That'll add another, yeah, probably another 50 to 60 or 80 kilos of weight for little benefit when you can sort of strip reinforce. And I'm all about that. You gotta remember we've got bulkheads in, intersecting with the deck and everything as well here. So there's a lot going on, but yeah, for now, um, that is what's going on along here, the 10 mil, and up into the back here. Obviously, we've got a lot of foam going down at the moment, and uh, that's going to be a hell of a lot of work putting all that down. Uh, I'll need one more piece for there, and then obviously another four for the other side. So, I'm going to do all these side panels. I'm going to start with this one here. Normally, I'd start the front, but it's a little bit too, too difficult. So, I'm going to put this one down first and then work my way back. The front one's going to take some shaping and certainly need a little bit of extra uh, templating before I can put that one down. Now it may not be that obvious, but you can see here when I pick this uh, panel up that I'm applying to the sea light to how flexible this stuff really is. And in fact, it doesn't need to be grid scored or cross cut like the thicker mediums of foam that I've been using. And the nice thing about that was very, very easy to work with. I was able to simply weigh it down after uh, getting the sea light to cover the entire surface and the stuff stuck. Uh, down really well and conform to that slight shape that I had on the edge of this companionway. So I adopted the same process as I did with the main windows that uh, I did last week where I actually overlapped the top foam across the top of the foam underneath and then simply used an oral sander to take the edge off it. You can see here where it's actually overlapping, it was simply a 10 minute job to sand that edge off with my orbital sander and, and, and ended up with a really nice finish on the edge there with a slight radius. I then used a hand block and sander just to finish it off. And, and remembering that I'm trying to develop a bit of a process here where I uh, do a lot of the work while it's actually facing me rather than when it's overhead at a later day. You gotta remember I'm gonna about to laminate this over and the smoother I can get that curve and that laminate will result in a lot less work going forward. So I'm getting to the end of the companionway foam. I've basically done both sides, every single piece. There's 10 sheets of it, uh, 2.4 meters long. So yeah, a lot, a lot of work. And now I've basically sanded and beveled an edge on them. I'm happy. I'm sort of complete up in there. That just needs to be solid glass all the way down to the lip there. And then uh, I've just worked out I'm gonna have to do some foam around those windows just to get it all level and to have a really nice cosmetic finish inside. I'm up here on the starboard side. It's actually starboard even though it's on my left. 
Uh, but you gotta remember it's gonna be over the other way. And I've just gotta do this last piece here. Essentially, I've just gotta give the surface a clean. I'm keeping it all very, very clean in here. I vacuum every day and I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible so we have no sort of uh, surface or contaminations of, of material from outside or oil or gas or whatever. So by keeping it nice and clean, I'm able to just give it a quick wipe with the styrene apply the uh, bedding compound, the sea light, and weigh it down, just like I've done over here on the port side. And then uh, once it's all set, I can get in there with my orbital sander and then shape it to blend it all in. And it's starting to blend really nicely. It's, uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier for laminating the more blending I do with the sander. I don't wanna be sort of trying to cut and uh, pleat cloth around some unusual little bends, like up in the corner there, right up in the top there. There's a nice little curve there now that'll uh, be very, very easy to laminate over. Unfortunately, if you have sharp edges, you're going to get air bubbles, and I'm ensuring that there's absolutely no sharp edges here, and there's a lot of fill going in. So last piece right now is going in here, this one here, and then I'm gonna start on the internals of those side window mullions. Now that's very important because I want it to be a cosmetic finish. Once it's glassed, it's simply going to be fed and painted. There's not gonna be a liner on those areas, which will give it a nice, easy, clean and clean look. And obviously keep weight down and uh, and, and reduce the amount of work going forward for me uh, when I get to the completion stages of the cat uh, in six or eight months. Who knows? We're, uh, we're in May now, so God knows how much more I've got to go. Probably another year, but you know, I'm working on, uh, on cutting that shorter as I'm doing this stuff now, spending a bit more time and a bit more time on the detail will reduce my time going forward. But yeah, gonna get this bit down now and, uh, and then I'm off on holidays. I'll tell you about that in a moment. All right, it's Janet's birthday and we're booked to go to New Zealand. So we're heading off we're at the airport. Very strange after a couple of years of not coming to airports. And uh, at least we don't have to smile for the camera anymore, eh? <laughs> we're here. You ready to go? Yeah, I need a photograph to send to the girls in the book. Yeah. Welcome to sunny New Zealand. <laughs> oh, it's sunny, it's pouring. <laughs> Almost there, aren't we, done? Yep. We're on our way down to Wanaka from Queenstown, and uh, yesterday was horrendous weather. I thought we we're not going to see anything, and we've woken up to this just amazing view. And uh, we're up on the the, uh, the range, just looking down towards the Coronet Peak. Absolutely beautiful, eh, home? Oh, we're very lucky to have good weather because it's supposed to be horrendous all week, but we've cracked this day and might just gorgeous. Yeah, it might be our only good day, eh? <laughs> the top of the Crown Range. Whoa, that's awesome. Look at that. I was aiming for your face. I just couldn't throw my left hand. I did like a girl chuck. <laughs> I chucked like a girl. I shouldn't say that, but I don't chuck like a girl when I do it with my left hand. <laughs> Having a ball. This is great. We have just arrived in Wanaka. Oh my god, the weather's just incredible. It was putrid yesterday and we've got this insane clarity today and the mountain range is just beautiful. Mount Aspiring National Park in the distance. Good, eh? Stunning. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, I put your coat on and I went, oh my god, I picked up the size 16. What are you saying? I'm fat. <laughs> no, I'm saying you're twice the size of here. <laughs> 
top of the Crown Range uh, late in the afternoon. It's bloody cold. I mean, it would be probably minus five, minus six, even more. It's bloody cold. And I've just got and bought a new jacket from MacPack, and uh, it's in the car. You'd think you'd have put it on, wouldn't you? But yeah, pretty cold. <laughs> She's going to get it for me. Buy a beanie. It was either buy a bum for 50 bucks or buy one for five. So I bought the five dollar one for 45 bucks and go back into the boat. Or buy us a beer. That's probably more important. The brewery, Janet. Canyon Brewing. That's pretty cool. See what happens when you take the wrong turn? That's cool. Look at that. But yeah, this is a shot over a river. And we're gonna have a beer overlooking the shot over a river. We found the Canyon Brewery. Janet's into it. It's good stuff, eh? Birthday. The week-long birthday. Looking behind Gandalf the Blonde. Look at the staff. <laughs> it's bigger than she is. Thou shall not pass. <laughs> now, I don't know whether I've uh, talked about this before, but uh, Janet loves to walk, and, uh, and bushwalking is one of her favourite things and tends to drag me along on every holiday. And uh, as soon as we get there, it's like massive walks ensue. No matter what happens, we always end up doing 20, 30 kilometre walks. Um, but hoping for a really restful, relaxing holiday after the heavy work I've been doing on this hull wasn't to be. Um, Janet dragged me up every mountain and on every track you can imagine in New Zealand. And, you know, to be honest, it is her birthday, so we're going to do what Janet says. But, uh, yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful trip and uh, what an amazing place. Good thing about going up a hill is you get to go down it. <laughs> that was a bit of a hill. It's not a mountain, but a hill, apparently. Oh, look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Is that the way we have to drive? No. Well, we made it, darling. We actually went to the peak. Oh, it's just there. It's only there, but we will make it. A couple of old coots. Show all you youngins. The old coots make it to the peak. Not a bad effort. From the chiropractor. <laughs> New knees. The ski fields over there. Wow. Let's go. Do you have my stick for me? Gandalf? Gandalf the blonde, who was Gandalf the brunette when I met her. Stop going on about it. I'd be Gandalf the grey if I was really upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, darling. 7 a.m. Milford Sound. Check this out. We're heading down to go sea kayaking this morning. It's freezing. It's about five degrees. Um, the views, my God. If you haven't been here, this place is just incredible. The the scenery is mind blowing. After an absolutely stunning drive down, we've arrived. Milford Sound. I mean, look, <laughs> epic scenery. Some of the wildest drive. It was just incredible coming down through that massive tunnel and down over the edge. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's five degrees down in here, so we've got a good day for the morning. There's a big snow and rain front coming at about 3 p.m., so we'll be out of here by then. We're going to rug up, get ourselves geared up and get kayaking. Well, I hope they show up. We're two hours from nowhere. <laughs> going to get geared up. I've got my um, booted pants on, my dry pants. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Bungee boards. Line over there. Stop 
all the way. We just, yep, that's enough. Perfect man. All good. How are we doing in the front seat? Milford Sound. How good is this? Finally made it, honey, after what, 30 years I wanted to paddle in? together as a group. Okay, we want to be an obvious group of kayaks paddling around. Uh, generally speaking, we have people who are faster and people who are slower. Uh, that's just the way of the world. Uh, so if you happen to be a faster person and you're paddling out the front of the group, that's absolutely fine. But I need you, if you're out the front, to always be having a look over your shoulder, see where everybody is. The one right there, <laughs> Bowen Falls. Yeah. What was that one called? I don't know. Look at that. Can't believe how clear it is. How good is this? Hey, I'm just told this is it. Mate, this is a postcard today. Exciting. <laughs> Janet's gonna go paragliding. Yes, for a big birthday, we're doing the paragliding, so it's gonna be a hoot. Don't you think, Darren? You ready? Yeah, I'm looking forward Pretty excited, eh? <laughs> bit nervous, but a bit excited, so. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some footage of it, eh? <laughs> you good? Did he get? What's the matter, Darren? Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> you're gonna freaking, you're gonna love it. Like, I know, you're gonna I know, love it. I know. Now, there's a story to this. No, I don't want to. Oh, do I really that. wanted to do it, but I'm too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like way too heavy. They have a maximum weight limit, and uh, yeah, I'm a few kilos over, sadly. So I can't jump off the mountain with it's Janet. My birthday, anyway. Though. It's Janet's birthday. <laughs> I'm just a tag along on this holiday. It's Jan's very special birthday, so we're very lucky to have been able to have an awesome holiday in New Zealand. Uh, three days after the bubble opened, actually two days after the bubble opened again. So how lucky are we that we booked something and uh, were then able to go. But, but the weather's been ridiculously good. We've cracked it just about, other than the first day we got here, we've had amazing weather. Keeps telling us it's not going to be good. Yeah, the forecast just been shocking, but Take care of her, mate, won't you? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Take care of her. I will, I will, just She'll like right. agreed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We've got the life insurance, we're all good. <laughs> Have a ball, Gav. We'll see you down the bottom. See you, eh? Jen. I don't know whether I'm going down the bottom. I think I'm going to stay here. Yeah, all right, I'll see you. See you, cool. Have Bye. fun. Have you got your phone with you? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Brilliant, thanks, mate. Have fun. See you, down. Have a ball. I was hoping to be able to go and watch it take off, but it's not going to happen. They don't let you up there, bugger. But anyway, I'm going to go over onto this viewing platform over here, and she's going to do a flyby, give me a little royal wave, being as English as she is. I'll go and have a cappuccino while Janet's a bit frightened, but she's very nervous, but she loves this sort of stuff. This is what she does. Big thing is, is 
big stop at the top there, oh. lovely, there we are, excellent. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> now, um, we've, my stomach. <laughs> we've still got a little bit of height here, we'll just have a, just a quick chat about the landing, okay? Yeah. So we are going to come in pretty quickly. I'm going to slow down, of course, oh. but it will only be just before we turn. Yeah. So don't worry if it looks a bit fast, okay? How was that? Was it good? Oh, honey, well done. I'll be smiling for the rest of the day. Oh, brilliant. So, is it good, Jen? I don't care, I don't think it matters. Get an orange one. No, it's orange. There you go, my Awesome. Yeah, no, you love that. That was so good. Yeah, I'm thrilled for you. That's great. She can't take the smile off her face, can you? I'll be smiling all day. Thanks so much. See ya. Bye bye. Good, hun. <laughs> well, I sent a message to my mum and she said, I've started praying. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I said, you don't have to pray, mum. This is what Janet loves to do. <laughs> she she just loved it. And tell, tell Betty how good it was. It could be worse ways to go anyway. <laughs> oh, what a way to go. If you're going to go, you may as well jump off a mountain. Good on her. It's fantastic. So you know how you feel when you go to those fun parks and you stand on the sideline because you're too fat <laughs> to fit in the bloody ride, like the roller coaster you just can't fit? That's a bit how I feel. I wanted to do the paragliding, but Roscoe's a little bit heavy. <laughs> I'm about five kilos or probably 10 kilos too heavy for the paragliding. So I miss out. So there's something to aim for, isn't there, darling? He'd <laughs> love it too. I used to watch those people at the fun parks and think, you poor buggers, how embarrassed are you? I feel the same way now. No, don't. <laughs> don't. It's just a thing for It's all good. <laughs> it's a small person's uh, gig. As we wing our way back to Sydney from Queenstown, honestly, it's a two hour 40 flight and I have never been to New Zealand. I have always uh, gone elsewhere and, and I don't know why, that was one of the best holidays. It was such a short break and we were so fortunate to have been able to get over there uh, during all these restrictions. Just as the bubble opened, uh, we were able to book a reasonably cheap flight and get over there and have such an incredible holiday and back to the holes tomorrow with a few injuries from uh, from all the walking and I think uh, yeah my knees are going to pay for that trip for some time but back on the holes tomorrow and, uh, and I'll see you next week thanks for joining us guys